It may sound futuristic, but it's been around for years and it's here to stay. We're talking about robotically assisted surgery and it's grown at BV Healthcare. General surgeon, Dr. Mark Facciolo will share the latest on this incredible option. Welcome to BB Healthcare, a podcast from BB Healthcare. I'm your host, Maggie McKay. Welcome, Dr. Pacciolo. It's so great to have you here. I can't wait to hear more about this topic. Would you please introduce yourself? Thanks, Maggie, very much. I'm Mark Pacciolo. I'm one of the general surgeons at BB Healthcare. I'm currently the vice chair of the general surgery department, as well as the acting medical director of the robotic division at BB Healthcare. And so let's just start right off with what is robotic surgery? Robotic surgery, despite the allure, is actually a is actually a new tool and a transition from general laparoscopy, which we are familiar with, minimally invasive instruments and techniques which create small incisions and allow us to do major operations through those small skin incisions. Robotics takes that a step further, allowing utilization of finer instruments and machinery that controls those instruments and allows the surgeon to control additional numbers of instruments. Uh, by hand, as well as to do more advanced techniques than laparoscopy has allowed us to do in the past. And what kind of training is required to be certified? So for most, they begin their experience in their residency training or exposed to robotics. It essentially has been available since 2008, and a lot of folks are exposed to it early in their careers. Once you come out of your training and and look to pursue a career in robotic surgery or use that as a tool with which you use to practice, uh, there's training uh, on the device. There are um, educational seminars, which are required, uh, as well as a set of modules and um, training exercises that the, that the machine actually has encoded within its software, where the, the new and young surgeon takes these on, advances their skills, essentially learns the ins and outs, the nuances of the machine. That way, when you begin doing actual real procedures, uh, you're not having any of the hiccups of learning sort of a new technology or modality. So can you remember back when you first learned and trained on it, was it awkward or like Jetson-like? It's not really fair. They use the term intuitive. And I think it really does actually, and not paying me to say it, coin exactly how this thing feels. Um, It moves exactly like you'd think it does. It really... Uh, It it really is akin to open surgery. It allows you to use your wrists and fingers in a way which is sort of very natural. Um, The ability to see better and move better when when using sort of a laparoscopic viewpoint is something which is really sort of mind-blowing when you you first sit down at the device. What it's able to let you see and do um, is the thing that's really surprising more so than than just the, the, the nuance of using the new machine. And is this accurate that the tools are maybe curved rather than the old school, you know, just straight and flat? Sort of, sort of. In reality, whereas in traditional laparoscopy, because the instruments are straight, they actually sort of fulcrum or hinge right on the abdominal wall. But the, the, all of the instruments within the robotic platform actually articulate much like our wrists do and actually move a lot more than the human wrist does. So it's actually able to turn your hand you can clutch around and that instrument can continue to turn. So you can almost make two whole turns, um, you know, by, by rotating one's own wrist. That's amazing. What are the overall benefits for patients? For many, it's, it's something that they'll see immediately right after surgery. Factually, robotic surgery has allowed us to perform more complex surgeries um, with less discomfort and less pain. And that's been certainly clear when we compare traditional robotics to open surgery. There is a lot of divisiveness when we compare laparoscopic surgery to robotics because it is very similar. But what I would explain to patients is that the benefits for are a couple fold. First, we'll start with what our patients experience. And that is not only do they get minimally invasive surgery, but the, the, um, the technology itself, the visualization, the articulation of those instruments allows your surgeon to do more complex things in a minimally invasive fashion. And so it minimizes the risk of conversions to open. And for anyone who's ever had a large or open incision, they know that the pain, uh, the secondary complications of scarring and, and hernias and that sort of, those things are going away, um, which is fantastic. I mean, to be, to be part of that transition in surgery. 
uh, because of the abilities of the machinery to, again, enhance surgeon visualization and surgeon mobility, it's actually able to expedite much of the surgery that they're getting, which means they're spending less time on the operating room table. There's less risk for things like cardiovascular or pulmonary complications because of you know anesthesia. We tell our patients in the general surgery world that in, in doing hernias, we've avoided uh, the use of urinary catheters almost in their entirety, which means no urinary retention or secondary complications from that in our patients. So that's a win. All in all, again, there's a lot of benefits um, for our patients in that sense. And it really is, again, more than just uh, sort of dollars and cents pictures or, or how quickly you return to work. Fulcruming uh, of the instruments on the abdominal wall has made a marked decrease in the amount of discomfort that patients have postoperatively. Uh, we see it every day. Folks come into the office after their operations and they've taken but a few Tylenol. And these were procedures that we were sending folks home on that, you know, a handful of oxycodone or, or tramadol or something. We're just not taking them. Wow. So basically, you get out of the hospital sooner and your recovery is faster for starters. Essentially. Wow. Uh, doctor, do you have any specific success stories that that you kind of remember in your head? Absolutely. I mean, we first started the program about four years ago. And, you know, we look at this program as one that's sort of new and it's new to the area. But, you know, for those that are listening, we've been doing robotic surgery since, you know, it's been four years now and completed uh, just about 2,500 procedures. Actually, we're getting close to 3,000 procedures. Um, the list of folks we've been able to help, you know, that list grows and grows Specific standout stories, I had a patient of mine who presented in the after hours, who at the time when um, the, the ability to use the robotic platform um, you know, wasn't always available because certain staff needed to be trained, needed to be you know, readily available to do those procedures. And the way this sort of car is lined up, we were able to, to get this woman in and treat her, her incarcerated hernia, which is often treated with an open procedure, you know, a big open incision and possibly a bowel resection. We were able to do the entire thing through just a few uh, poke hole incisions, you know, eight millimeters wide. Uh, we're able to replace, I was able to reduce her hernia. Uh, we're able to repair that defect within her abdominal wall. And, and I tell her that she essentially received an elective surgery and she came in in an emergency after hours. So I, we, we like this story because it shows the growth of the program that we're beginning to expand not only the, the access to the robot in, in forms of time and availability, but also in the procedures that we're able to do. I think that's the thing that we really want to sort of get the word out and expand to our patients and our, and our fellow uh, providers and practitioners is that we've done enough procedures and our skill sets evolved enough that we're really beginning to expand and push what we're able to do. And again, and that means for, for folks who need surgery, even emergency surgery, that some traditional open surgery can now be done in a minimally invasive fashion. That's impressive. For, for people who maybe are a little nervous about, you know, it sounds like a robot's doing it all, and of course that's not accurate, but um, what would you like to tell people, what should they know about robotic surgery that they may not? I mean, you've touched on a lot already, but for the people who are nervous, Right. Yeah. Robotic surgery, like, again, it has a certain like allure panache because we think about, you know, mechanics and, you know, RJD2 or my surgeons, you know, at home and the robots doing the case. And that's not the case at all. There's a lot of touch points with us. When you come into the operating room, you'll see the device and it's draped in its sterile attire. And, and as your surgery starts and the patients go off to sleep, your surgeons at bedside, I, you know, or any one of my colleagues who performs robotic surgery, we place those instruments, you know, in the abdomen. And then once everything is set up and we've got the robot in position, that's when we, we break scrub. The surgeon console is anywhere between, you know, 10 and 12 feet from the edge of the bed. And this is where we control all the devices and do the operation. So it's important, you know, we say that, that the surgeon's in the room the whole time. Your surgeon is doing your operation. Uh, the ergonomics are much better, which is just a nice way of saying for much of the procedure, we get to sit down. Uh, but we are there the whole time. And then once the procedure is over, uh, your surgeon will scrub back into the field, close all the incision sites, and, and get you off the table. Is there ever a time when a patient says, I don't want it, like they're old school and they're just, they don't want it. They want uh, the traditional kind of surgery. That's a good question. It, we don't really see that much. We get more folks who ask, hey, do you do this? Should I get it that way? Or when we offer it, why do I want to have it? And I think that's that's sort of the way we look at it. You know, it's important that we don't just use 
the robot for every single procedure that we can get our hands on. You know, it's important that we recognize this is a tool. It's got some benefits. There are some downsides. You know, for example, the instruments, because of their enhanced mobility, take a little bit more distance uh, inside the abdominal cavity to, to work. So if there's ever a condition where, you know, we need to sort of work in, in tighter quarters, um, the robotic platform is, is factually, you know, not as good, okay? Um, but I think having the skill set and the experience uh, on the device allows us to sort of really give a person-to-person, -person, you know, discussion and, uh, and a, a very pointed, you know, care plan that, you know, most of the time includes robotics as opposed to, you know, an open procedure. What do you like most about the team at BB Healthcare? I'm glad we get a chance to talk about it because much of the successes of the robotic program at BB really does fall down on the team. Um, very privileged to have some experienced um, team members who've, who've come together from you know, some other institutions or some with robotic experience themselves and have joined our team. There is a complete and total buy-in. You know, robotic surgery is very exciting. And as we've progressed in our case volume and developed some efficiencies, there is a certain buzz in the room, and that's the best way I can describe it. You know, we all want to see cases run smoothly. We want to see the day run smoothly. You know, we, we don't like when things aren't working or, or you know, there, there's hangups or there's problems. Even though the folks are working hard in the room and the turnover is, is, you know, is tight in the room, when the cases are running well, there's a certain excitement that makes people want to work harder, want to contribute, want to get better. And that's really made for some fantastic efficiencies in the room. And, and we have a lot of people to thank for that. We have some behind the, behind the scenes folks who make sure that, that, the, that the instrumentation is always you know, available. It's ready to go. It's, you know, it's clean. It's even when we got through COVID having you know, delays or things on back or we're able to keep our volume you know, at, at peak numbers because those folks were working hard to get us what we needed to be able to do the operations. Our staff at the bedside does an excellent job of really troubleshooting, uh, making sure if there's you know, instrument collisions or having availability, there are an extra set of eyes on the case, which are really helpful. We've got some experienced folks who are not only familiar with the robot, but familiar with the cases that we're doing. And again, I think that has turned into and partly into a very wonderful efficiency program that really is unrivaled in much of the nation. When we start looking at what we've been able to achieve, case numbers, case volumes, there's an exceptional efficiency of movement. I think that's the best way to sort of describe that. Our thoroughfare of patients, getting them in the rooms, getting the robot docs set up, getting their surgeries completed, and then getting them off the table. And again, we've talked about some of the benefits of that, but a lot of that really comes down to sort of the teamwork all around uh, of folks who see you know, the robotics program being successful. That's got to be reassuring as a patient to know that the people in the room are so passionate about getting it right. So that's awesome. So when it comes to the future of robotic surgery, what are you excited about? Uh, the sky's the limit. You know, I, to be honest, it has given us so much that I think we even have yet to take advantage of. I'm looking forward to some of the advanced um, uh, instrumentation that is going to come out with the new devices. The new staplers are extremely intelligent in that they, they make computational analyses, which make sure you're using the right staple height. For you know, for division of intra-abdominal organs. I mean, it, there is just so many things that are being processed and worked on. Um, I look forward to having another arm. Right now, uh, on the surgeon console, we have control of four arms, and I think there's times that you know an additional arm may be beneficial. Um, some of the articulation um, of the arms uh, as that changes, and the mobility of of the of the of the device itself. There was a previous iteration where in order to do larger operations, you actually either had to undock the robot and spin it around or spin the patient. And in this new platform, uh, that thing can spin all the way around to do surgeries. And I look at, I look at that as also uh, being an improvement, minimizing the impact of that big machine in the room and uh, making it more accessible to, you know, sort of hard to reach areas, maybe obviating the, the cons of working in excuse me, working in tight fields or tight areas. But I see those are all potential uh, areas of, of where this is going. Uh, to answer your question more specifically, I'm really excited to see where robotics can take us. We in this generation are challenged with the transition from traditional open surgery to minimally invasive surgery. And, and it is oftentimes where we have to operate on folks who've had larger midline incisions for previous surgeries. 
And I think the robotics platform lets us do two things, lets us successfully perform minimally invasive surgery in people who've had open surgeries, which was historically would preclude safe entry or safe laparoscopic surgery, but it also lets us do those same open procedures in a minimally invasive fashion as well. Now, we don't do all of those in the, all of those procedures here, but again, robotics has been has been fairly prolific in the nation and there are a number of extremely advanced and, and technical procedures which only were reserved for open procedures are now being done due to the benefits of robotics. And I think that's the next big change that especially patients will see is is really getting away from those large open incisions almost in their entirety. Dr. Faciolo, did you ever think when you were starting out in medicine, in, in med school, that this would be an option in the future? Factually, I'm not so old as that, that robotics was, was sort of in its infancy as a whole <laughs> when I was in my training. Um, but factually, it was slow. Like, it was how I imagine um, laparoscopic surgery was for some of those docs who were practicing in the 80s. It was new technology. It was slow. It was expensive. Um, there were folks who just sort of said, oh, that's just sort of, you know, the new novel thing. I don't want to waste my time. I'm really good doing what I'm doing. And, and I've, you know, we've seen it explode. You know, patients are now aware of this. They're seeing the outcomes. They're seeing the benefits. And again, I think what it's been able to have us do, I, I never thought possible. I mean, I remember sitting in as a, as, a, as a high school student watching a robotic surgery, and it was a six and a half hour operation. And that same operation I saw not long ago, just, you know, and it's done more commonly, it took about 48 minutes. So again, all it's not about speed, it's about how as the technology evolves and as the experience of those that are doing it evolves, um, how much better those things are and, and, and how awesome the outcomes are. What has been awesome to be a part of that, it's really exciting. I think if that's anything, you know, when, when people hear me talk about robotics and talk about surgery, I was telling them, I'm really excited and I love what I do because it's a great time to be doing it. We really are on a, on a paradigm shift to take what we do to a new level. And I think robotics plays a big role in that. Again, it's not the, it's not the sole, you know, sort of a product of, of surgical of techniques, okay? But when it's the right tool for the right person, um, it does provide us a wonderful list of benefits. That sounds very exciting. In closing, is there anything else you'd like to add that we didn't cover? I don't think so. I, you know, part of this, again, I was the allure to get people familiar with what robotics are. You know, um, ask questions. Um, you can see a lot of the stuff on the internet in this day and age. Much of that information is available to you. So I, I encourage you to explore, ask your, ask your doctor questions, and, and really get a chance to sort of see for yourself. And uh, again, talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors. A lot of them have probably had robotic surgery. And they can tout its benefits. So it's not like we're out here selling it. You know, we see it every day. Patients are having wonderful outcomes. And we say sort of the proof is in the pudding. Word of mouth, um, referrals and, and, and discussions regarding its benefits are, are happening all over. And if someone would like to find out more or make an appointment, where would they go? I'd start them first at, the, at BB's website at bbhealthcare.org. From there, they can you know, jump off to the robotic center uh, web pages. They can see, they can see us on the robotic side, but they can also see any one of the various subspecialists who are performing robotic surgery. That's so great. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise. This is such a fascinating topic. I just love hearing about it. We appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Again, that's Dr. Mark Facciolo. And if you found this podcast helpful, please share it on your social channels and check out our entire podcast library for topics of interest to you. This has been BB Healthcare Podcast presented by BB Healthcare. Thank you for listening. I'm Maggie McKay.